Woo woo! All aboard the hype train! It's, it's been a while since we did a hype train, so you'd have thought mm. we'd have at least got a sound effect. Maybe an animation. You literally make animations for a living, and we still haven't. <laughs> or some a train going through. Train driver hats. Or maybe. train driver hats. Some I kind of clever that, like some cool hats. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I mean, I feel like you've probably got a train driver hat. I've got now. one, but we need two, surely. Well, there can only be one train driver. I could be the conductor. I think you are more like driving this train, Johnny. Right. See, you've been where we're, we're going today. I have been. I haven't been there. I have been in a, an epic solo road trip. So occasionally, Brad and I are spotted in the wild apart. Wow. Um, yeah, so recently I was over in Chicago and St. Louis doing research for my next book, which comes out next year. It's called The Meaning of Beer. It's going to change your life. Uh, Good plug. Well, there we go. That worked. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I mean, I visited loads of amazing breweries in Chicago. You can see the places that I went when I interviewed uh, Doug Velicki, the, the beer aficionado. But I also went down to St. Louis to visit a brewery that we might not name. Yeah. But it was part of the research. A very big brewery. They Pretty just big. call it The Brewery okay. uh, in St. Louis. A lot but, of buddies down there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, nice. Uh, but I think to most beer geeks, The Brewery that is in St. Louis is actually these guys. So I was very, very lucky to be able to have, find some time to visit Side Project. Yes. Um, as hype breweries go, you know, these guys are pretty unusual and it's not the IPAs that everybody's talking about. It is to some extent the Imperial Stouts that they make and I tried a couple of those at the tap room. Uh, but really it's the Wild Ales that these guys are incredible at. Nice. Um, so I went to the, the cellars rather than the actual tap room. Right. Um, so I, what's a when you say cellar, is it is it an actual cellar or is it still a tap room? Very much not. Right, okay. Very much like a, it was a lovely little, almost kind of Englishy vibe. In fact, they had some real ale on. And they were like, do you want to try the real ale? And I was like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not coming all the way from England not, to St. Louis to try yeah, the real ale. I'm all right with that, thanks. If I'm, if I'm entirely honest. But, <laughs> so I was all about the wild ales and I did try one giant, very coconutty imperial style that was wow. delicious. But I was here for this and actually they, they very kindly cracked this open so that I could have a cry. Uh, a, a cry, I did a actually. A cry? A try. <laughs> a try of this one. But yeah, so they're famous for their, their wild ales. And Side Project actually started, it's called Side Project because it was a side project of Corey King, one of the founders, um, uh, along with his wife Karen, while he was working at Perennial, which is another oh, great brewery right, in St. Okay. Louis. Okay. So that's why it's called Side Project. Um, and I think he did that because he wanted to focus on this style of beer. Mm. So these wild ales yeah. are talked about in the kind of hushed tones, I think, that say like Cantillon or the, the more rare Tilcans are. Yeah, you this know, is like really a, special. a rare American beast, right? Yeah. Because it is wild ales. Exactly. And of course, because it's, yeah. you know, a lot of IPA brewers, they'll do pretty much sort of, you know, false scarcity. They won't brew too much of it so that it keeps our reputation. Yeah. Here, the, you know, the, there's only so many barrels you can put in a place. There's only yeah. so far ahead you can predict things. So mm -hmm. these are... You know, there's not huge amounts of this, and that's why they're very expensive, both from the brewery, but also the, like the secondary market is pretty insane for side projects okay. as well. Um, I had a limited space in my suitcase, so I only went for small bottles. It's a bit gauche to talk about money, Johnny, but just to give people a, a bit of an idea, how much is, is one of these bottles? I, I think it's about twenty twenty five dollars for one of these. Small Significant ones. amount of money, and yeah. that's because they are they're, they're wild, they're barrel aged, and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, and as we're going to learn, you know, yeah. there's a lot of local ingredients that go into these right, beers, okay. um, or even if they're not local, a lot of very high quality American fruits and stuff like that. Best so, of the best type. Exactly. Stuff. No Top corners gun. are cut. This is all about making the best, and also the most kind of true to the ingredient kind yes. of kind of beers. It's not like hops where you try to extract fruit from hops. It's like we want this to scream apricot when there's apricots in this. Amazing. Speaking of which, should we do the first one that's got apricot? I can't wait, man. I, th I think, the, you know, elevating stuff in such a way is beautiful, right? And it's worth paying a little bit more for, hopefully. Can't wait, Johnny. Crack it. So we're going to start with an apricot beer, La Fosse. This nice. is, on, on the bottle it tells us it's a Missouri wild ale, which could kind of mean anything. We just know it's going to be a mixed culture beer. Yeah. Um, and it's with apricots, uh, which I believe we're from Oregon. Oregon apricots. Oregon apricots. Lovely. Hipster apricots. Wow. Know. Look at that. Look at the smoke on it, Johnny. Smoke on the opening. So plenty of carbonation. That's what I'd want it's, from a beer like this. It's a beautiful apricot style color as well. I just want to add. That is kind of stunning, that colour. Yeah. I don't know whether really, it's because really it's a beautiful nice. day today and lovely and bright, but it looks absolutely gorgeous. That's wonderful. Wonderful. Let's get the aroma, shall we? Oh yeah. I mean that's super reminiscent. I mean it's the it's the only other really famous apricot beer, but it's super <sighs> reminiscent of Fafoon from from Cantillon. Like really fresh, juicy, so zingy. Yeah, but yeah, like you say, zingy, incredibly wow. acidic. Sherby, sherbety on the nose. Yeah. I feel like the sherbet's going up my nostrils already, Johnny. 
It's like, yeah, apricot yogurt with, with, with a million lemons squeezed on top. <sighs> it's essentially that aroma. It smells great. Incredible. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. That is <laughs> way more apricot than I expected. Yeah. Like, the mouthfeel is kind of juicy. Wow. And I'm really glad it's got the high carb to cut through that, or else it would have been kind of New Englandy almost. But it's it's quite, yeah, quite quite velvety almost. It's got a, really a wonderfully fine carbonate. I feel like I've entered a different level on a computer game or something just then. <laughs> it went all around my mouth. Yeah, I can feel it hitting everything, and I feel like the top of my head just exploded with apricot. <laughs> It's like amazing. You, you've run through a load of Mario rings. Yeah. And something's happened where Mario's gone, way. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, that is, that's special. Yeah. That's really great. It's re like, I, I was expecting this to be quite yeast forward because there's loads of lactic character yeah. on it and to be quite, you know, thin and acidic and bright mm. and refreshing. Actually, it's very, very juicy. But also my tongue is absolutely coated. It feels furry. It feels like there's apricot skin on my tongue. Yeah. It's a very tactile beer and i know that sounds super wanky but it's tactile somehow i mean i'm not even a massive apricot fan but that is that is pro that's like the best apricot i've ever drunk johnny <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's absolutely stunning and and there's lovely complexity to it as well like so much still going on loads of lactic almost no i don't think there's any real brett character to it it's very mm -hmm. much about the acidity and about the fruit yeah it's not like there's no farmy no. Funky vibes. I mean, there, 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 there's definitely Brett in there. There's definitely a kind mm. of pineapple-y, funky, rotten pineapple kind of thing going on. But it's very subtle and in the background. It's all about that acidity, which makes it feel more apricot-y as well. It's, it's real juicy. There's like mm. a sort of perceived almost sweetness, even though mm -hmm. it's very sort of sour. It is pretty dry and sour, yeah. It's, but it's somehow... I've got such a sweet tooth, and this is like... It's like a bag of Haribo Tang Fastics. Oh, if they were it. apricot. And made of Oregon apricots, Johnny. <laughs> Which and now I need to go to Oregon to get some apricots. They're obviously yeah, amazing. Apparently, apparently they're great at growing apricots. Um, that's, as, that's, that's a little bit better than I thought it was going to be. That's amazing. That's pretty special. But, yeah. So this beer, which they very kindly cracked so I can have a taste of. Creek, as you know, is one of my favourite styles of beer anyway, mm. certainly of sour beers. And this, this is going to blow your socks off. I'm very excited for you to try this. So now we move on to a creek. I don't even want to move on, Johnny. I just want to keep drinking <laughs> Keep this. drinking that. We'll, we'll come back to it. People often ask what we do with the beers after we drink them. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, what do you think we do with them? When they're that good, <laughs> we drink them. Um, as always, woefully unprepared for any kind of wax, waxy nonsense. I think this, Johnny, has got like a weird pool oh thing. Oh, my God. I didn't even call it the pool it, thing. It, I'm going to put the dangerous scissors Maybe uh, show it to the camera just so people can appreciate the weird pool so thing. So there's some kind of, some kind of thing there. Mm -hmm. Oh... Oh, See, this is what you get you when you buy what? a $25 creek. This is a baby bell opening mechanism. <laughs> That's what it is. It's anyone familiar with the uh, the child's cheese baby bell? You're going to be... you're gonna be Child's cheese? Oh, you know what? The, the, it's still a nightmare because these big caps are tricky with, <laughs> with our favourite bottle opener, the Hermitus, yeah, 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 but yeah. it is a bit tricky. Oh, Bradley, this is... The, lev the leverage is difficult, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Tell you what, I've got one with more leverage. Let's get this one that uh, Kyle from Clawhammer kind of gave us. Fire it up! There you go. That's it. Get onto there. This is tragic viewing. This is, this is what the people channel. want. No, no. This is what everyone wants. They want to see the struggle, Johnny. <sighs> That'll do it. Oh, I see. <laughs> this one's attached to oh, our light, people. Damn it. Now nah, you're dreaming. You think that's coming off. Just play some elevator music over this, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hey. Right. Okay. All right. If this doesn't work, I don't know what will. Hey! hey! Success. It's quite a sexy bottle. Over Let's give that one. Oh my goodness. So that's a stave from a barrel, right? And we're drinking that's something a out of and a barrel. And we're drinking a wild... Beautiful. A wild beer. I love the sort of synchronicity of it all. Baby Bell wrapper, that can go. Yeah, beautiful. So the first thing to note is it's a very pale pink colour. It's a lovely pink colour. Tell me what this is, Johnny. Right. Strap yourself in. Yeah. So this is a meadow foam honey saison. What's meadow foam? <laughs> I believe, and I've had to do the googling for this. This is a kind of honey yeah. from a bee that has consumed 
Meadow foam. Either meadow foam or meadow. Yeah, I think it's a plant called meadow foam. Right, okay. Which which apparently imparts the honey with a kind of marshmallow... Marshmallow and vanilla, vanilla as well, uh, experience yeah. potentially. I don't know how much of it we're going to get from that because obviously this has then been okay Pinot Noir barrels. Wow. Okay. Uh, and over cherries, uh, American cherries, uh, Balaton and Montmorency. Not a not a not a cherry I know of. But Montmorency. I know about Balaton. That's a lot of cherries. Yeah. Wow. They weren't content with the super niche honey, <laughs> or the the what what did you say? What barrels was it? Pinot Gris. Pinot, Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir barrels. So lovely, light, fr uh, yeah. fresh kind of red. That they they went to town with some with some crazy cherries as mm. well. Wow. And it's about I mean. Oh. There, there is a sweetness to it, but that could also be like, you know, some Saison yeasts can have that kind of character. I don't know whether their Saison is mixed firm, in which mm. case it might have more kind of, you know, lactobacillus and, and that kind of culture to it, and less of that saison -y kind of mm. honey sweet and banana and clove and that kind of stuff that you, that you get in a Belgian one. But it's, there's a sweetness that underlies the huge amounts of cherry that there's are a lot of cherry this. going on. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, and some definite oak as well. I'm mm. getting some real, yeah, some barrel, oaky barrel character, yeah, for sure. So it smells like heavily wine influenced, mm. Mm. with a good chunk of cherry and a little bit of sweetness underneath. I'm very excited. Me too. Mm. Jammy, quite dry, jammy. Yeah. So that, when I looked at that, mm. when it was poured. And when I was smelling it, I was like, I remember in the tap room it being very jammy. Mm. And it's not that jammy on the nose, but it is once you taste it. Mm. So it's really jammy, jammy. And then like you say, I'm not even sure it's dryness. I think it's oakiness. Is that what it is? It feels like a tannin. Right. It's, yeah, I'm perceiving it as sort of dryness, but yeah, maybe it yeah. is that sort like It's literally of drying out oakiness. your mouth rather than... Because yeah. dryness is the absence of sweetness. Mm -hmm. I think what I'm getting is tannin, which is literally like a powder coating on your, on your tongue and your teeth and your... Yeah. Tongue of their teeth and their lips. You've convinced me. <laughs> I've convinced you. me. Yeah. Talked you round. Talked me round. So yeah, I think it's real oakiness. And I think it is also a very dry beer, which you wouldn't necessarily... I think you would expect it from the aroma, but the amount of cherry might put, mm. make you wonder. Mm. What it is, is compared to this one, it's very nuanced and yeah. light and fresh. It's great. Whereas though. this one was very much more down the juicy all fruit character. Yeah, this one's a riot. Yeah. This one's like a sort of um, string quartet. I, I was about to say string quartet. I was. I was, I was, I was. There you go. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's delicate and balanced. But perfect Lots as of well. top notes. Yeah. A little bit of bass going on with the oak. Well, it wouldn't be bass, it would be a cello, mm -hmm. you know? I think it's, I mean, we, we have somehow turned into wine snobs instead of beer snobs in the way that we're talking about this. But I guess that's just how elevated these these drinks are you know they're trying to compete with with the finest of wines and trying to encourage people to talk about complexity in the way that we don't often in beer no no i think again it's an elevated drinking experience johnny well worthy of a hype train mm. uh entry ticket i mean I, I i've got to say i have not had i i have had quite a few Mm. American wild ales like this, you know, that's very much the American way to heavily, heavily fruit. For base, like massive. And, yeah, and yeah. use acidity to balance out that huge juiciness. Yeah. I haven't had a lot of American wild ales like this. I'd say it's almost it's almost subtle, isn't it? Yeah. In its complexity. Exactly, and because you know, in Belgium, they'll they'll they love Britannomyces. They'll take it down that funky route. Here, mm. there's almost no brown showing either mm. of these beers. Mm. No, really. no, no, no. Um, so what's left is loads of oak character, which certainly the Lambic producers would never really want. Um, so we get loads and loads of oak and vanilla kind of character, but also no Brett, and, and also not huge amounts of acidity on this beer either. No. So it's it's a very different prospect to what I'd expect from, say, a Belgian wild ale. Yeah, both the fruits in both get a chance to sort of really shine, mm. don't they, and, and show their, their kind of uh, depth and width. I don't use this word often, Johnny, but these these are both sublime beers. Sublime. 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 Verging on ridiculous. <laughs> this one's ridiculous. This is sublime. Mm -hmm. Is this indicative of you know what side project do who they are? You know, I think I think they're very well known for this, and they're very well known for their pastry stouts. But when I was at the tap room, I had mm. one of the best mixed firm saisons I'd ever had. 
like lovely gentle acidity and it was dry hop with i think with rakao right like genuinely incredible and my my face and what i said to the the bartender was so effusive that a guy like five seats down ordered it and then came up to me afterwards and was like that's the best saison i've ever had <laughs> and it was just like this wonderful wonderful interaction of people just being like i didn't even know these kind of flavors existed it was just lemon yeah. and lime and honey and uh, it was just incredible so they've got that line they've got this line they've got the pastry stouts and then i think over at the brewery and probably at the sellers as well there were fresh ipas and stuff which i didn't try but you know i'm sure they'd be very good because of the work that he's done at perennial mm. and, and, and other places um and then of course they had the car scales as well so wow they're very famous for this stuff but they're yeah. making absolutely everything which i think is really nice in a brewery that you know you you could spend 25 dollars on one bottle or you could spend 18 dollars on well, probably a four pack that's still quite expensive but it, it's it's something for everybody and that's what yeah. i got the sense of at, at the at the sellers um that all kinds of people who enjoyed all kinds of beer were there in fact the guy that loved the saison said i don't usually like sour beers so he was there literally you know for the pastries and for the ipas but he tried that and loved it um and that, that's a special moment, I think, when somebody has a sour beer and goes, oh, actually, that's delicious. Got a conversion right now. Yeah, exactly. Exactly that. Um, so for me, these are 100% worth the hype. Also, and I, I, I say this with caution, you know, trying to track down hype IPAs is, is you're never going to get the best IPA because of the way it's going to be treated along the yeah. way. Yeah. If, if, if you're buying this and aging it or if you're doing a bottle share with a friend, you know, these are going to hold up. I wouldn't say you should start trading them because I'm kind of against the secondary market, but... These beers will hold up, so it's worth trying to get your hands on them because um, they will still be in great condition. Mm. Uh, but it's also really worth visiting. So it's a lovely bar. I wish I could have spent more time there, but I was uh, shout out to Troika. I was on a tour of loads, so I went to Schaff, Schlafly. Schlafly. Uh, I went down to there was a, a brewery that had still had the cellars that were dug way back in the 1800s when all the Germans came over to St. Louis. Um, I went to yeah some incredible brewery. Urban Chestnut had incredible German lagers there as well, and a great Hefeweizen. So, St. Louis is a great drinking town. Right. Okay. And you know, Side Project and these beers from Side Project are just the start of that. Sounds um, like a lovely destination, Johnny, for any <laughs> beer fans out it's there. Pretty, it's pretty strong. I mean, I'm still not sure how Schlafly is is actually <laughs> pronounced, but that was strong. I really want to go now. Yeah. Uh, just uh, just for Side Project alone, I think yeah. this is genuinely world class. Like yeah. incredible. Um, I can't remember I've had a beer that tasted that much of apricot mm. and that that much of a riot. I mean it was it was like almost like a like a like a quick sour with complexity added, you know. Yeah, that yeah, much yeah. fruit but still lots of complexity underneath and I think yeah. that that is both very difficult to make and be very brave to make as well. Yeah. Um and it was stunning. Um and this just begs to be served next to some delicious mature cheese. Oh. Uh we'll see if we've got some. Uh so the hype train is is what does it do? Is it pull into the station when 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 we agree? It's time to disembark the hype train. Right, you've reached Flavor Town. Right, okay, cool. There we go. You Population two us beer and nerds. Everyone in St. Louis. Everyone in St. Louis. Yeah. They're already in the know. Uh, you need to get aboard this particular hype train. Yeah, because oh, the hype train uh, is know. the brewery. Yeah, but it's not like an amazing cafe car where people. Oh, hey, maybe it's yeah, maybe it's a cafe car on the train. We should think this through off camera and then actually have a good yeah a good like immediate yeah. thing to say in these videos.